This is an introduction to process modeling within ATEC. ATEC is one of the schools at the University of Texas at Dallas, and there are a wide variety of things going on there, very creative and uh, productive. So this series of lectures, and including this video, there are, are, are seven altogether, are gonna go over areas of concentration and pathways within ATEC and looking at these areas and pathways with respect to process modeling. So it's important to note that modeling in ATEC is, uh, you know, one of the key types of modeling in ATEC is what one might call shape modeling, uh, geometry modeling, modeling structure, um, and, and this can be seen in, in different places within ATEC, but probably the best is the well-known animation um, program where, where people are doing modeling all the time and they're doing modeling of um, animals and scenes and trees and so forth. So that's not the kind of modeling we'll be talking about here. We'll be just fo focusing on uh, process models, which are, to, which are to say simplifications of things that define a procedure or, or a process. Uh, this is a picture of ATEC, um, a fairly new construction. I think I moved in here in 2013. And uh, so very, very new building, very exciting building to be in. So as a kind of, you know, trying to connect ATEC with, with some of the other areas, other schools within UTD, NSM, ECS, JSOM, uh, EPS, and so forth. Um, in STEM fields, first of all, STEM fields are essentially rooted in mathematics. Um, you know, Galileo made this point in, in the 17th century that it, it's, you know, natural philosophy or what later be called, became physics is rooted in mathematics. And that's pretty much true for most of the STEM fields. So even though the M in STEM stands for uh, mathematics, it is in fact the, the foundation of science, technology, and engineering as well, the other letters in STEM. So there's a kind of culture that comes about with representing processes. And in uh, in, in the STEM fields, the process representations, the process models tend to be formal and standardized. So there's a kind of a tradition on representing models uh, in a standard way. In ATEC, there are standards as well, um, but there's, there's more representational freedom when it comes to representing a model. And so in ATEC, media, cultural context, interaction, sensory modality or all matter there there there's something that you find in ATEC that you don't necessarily find in the other schools so we think you know both perspectives are important you know having a standard or abstract formalism um, is important <clears throat> for many people to understand but representational freedom is also important as a way for the individual to come to understand something and to express themselves in a unique way. So what's a process? If we talk about process modeling, um, different definitions depending on the dictionary you look at. Something going on, a natural phenomenon marked by gradual changes that lead towards a particular result. Very sort of general, a series of actions or operations conducing to an end. Uh, you can also think of process as in in terms of English as looking for verbs seeking verbs because whenever you find a verb in English or indeed in, in any language you're you're cl that much closer to thinking about process modeling so a really general way of looking at model that I like to use uh, and this is sort of independent of, of school, independent of discipline, is it's a simplified representation of something. Uh, this picture represents up here, represents 
models that were created for very important people in ancient Egypt <clears throat> in their tombs. So they're sometimes called funerary models, and uh, they would be they would be in tombs because they played a role in the afterlife for the uh, ancient Egyptians. But if you um, go to a museum and go to the Egyptian section, you'll find a lot of these. And indeed, they're the simplified representations in wood, painted wood, of, of a particular scene in daily life. You're used to playing with toys as a kid. We all played with toys. So things like a toy train or a toy car um, is one way of thinking about modeling. Um, and and what's, what's important to note is this funerary model and the model that you played with as kids, uh, they're not process models. So I'm kind of just, I'm kind of gently getting towards the idea of process model. Um, how could they be made process models? Well, if in the um, Egyptian scene above, people are rowing, uh, there's things going on, and so those verbs indicate that there are processes going on which could be modeled, and those models would, would look different than this, right, because they, they're about process. Uh, some of the, just a note for the, these videos, some of the, there will be certain lengths like this one down here at the bottom, and you click on it and you get more information. Also, some of the, uh, the images can be clicked on and they will yield more information as well. So in ATEC, as well as every school and every sub-organization, uh, like department, they all deal with people. And so the, this sort of personal organization often will we'll be dealing with um, a process model involving business entities, involving people that move together and they communicate with each other and they hand things to each other. So there is a model type called um, Business Process Modeling End Notation, BPMN. And so these are examples of BPMN diagrams. They are models of business flow. So at a very high level, ATEC, like every organization, has modeling associated with it. So even at the high level, even before we get down to the pathways, we have this kind of model. Also, it needs to be said that, you know, coding has sort of permeated most of society, and, and many people do coding. It's not just those in computer science or information science um, or engineering. I mean, just many people take on the task of writing a computer program in order to perform a function, in order to succeed and maybe tackle a problem. And in ATEC, uh, this, these are widely used by various, lot of different people. And the way I'd like you to think about code or program is it's a model. These are models of a process. And even though it doesn't seem like it, it's usually the process of an agent, which the agent is kind of left, un left unspecified in this case. Um, but something has to be doing this. And before computer meant a piece of hardware, computer meant human. So for actually most of the history of the word computer, um, they, it, it meant, it meant um, a human being performing a process. So you can kind of think about that when you, when you look at code next. One of the languages I really like that focuses on creative visual and sonic cre creation um, is processing. And processing is really a family of languages. It's got, there's a Java-based version of processing. There's one on JavaScript. There's one on Python. 
So indeed, processing isn't one language, but a whole bunch of a family of different languages. And uh, this is just an example of what's called an IDE or integrated development environment, one of, one of many that exist for processing. So again, these are, this, is, this is a process model using, using code. Okay, what we'll be going into in the next set of videos will be, first of all, we'll just be talking about the idea of implicit process and then natural language. Now, the idea of implicit process in natural language is that everyone um, who speaks English or, or speaks any language is going to be familiar with this idea of modeling. It may not have been called modeling when you learned, um, say, English composition or how to write, but it is. It's a form of modeling when you are writing about, rep you're representing something in your writing, right? So it's, it's fundamental, it's foundational. Uh, then we'll go into art, design, animation, games, and critical media studies, which are all elements within ATEC.